Hi again, John Nielsen here with Wing Chun Hall. In a previous video, I mentioned that several Wing Chun practitioners were entering into competitions and winning. And a lot of people wanted to know, if Wing Chun is so great, why isn't it dominating the MMA today? Well, I'd like to tackle that question. But first, I think we should be clear on a few points. Number one, some people have tried to answer the same question by saying that Wing Chun wasn't designed for competition and will never work well in a competitive environment. I think that's a pretty weak argument. First, because Wing Chun actually has been in competitions and has won. Secondly, because there are several different kinds of combat disciplines that weren't designed for competition, and yet they found a way to enter into competitions and they win. Now, you may not train for competition. I don't, but that doesn't mean that nobody in your art can, and that doesn't make it illegitimate if they do. However, the MMA is a particularly poor game for a Wing Chun man to play, and I'll explain that later. Okay, second, there are several um, Wing Chun uh, practitioners who have entered into the MMA and won their matches. Third, Several of the uh, top competitors in the MMA mix Wing Chun training methodologies into their fighting tactics. Point four, many competitors in the MMA use Wing Chun techniques and win. For instance, there was a time when only Wing Chun schools were recommending punching with a vertical fist. Now nearly everyone in the MMA uses punches similar to ours because this method is more useful in preventing grappling. So Wing Chun is winning in the MMA today. There's just no pure Wing Chun stylist doing it. But nowadays there's no pure any stylist dominating the sport. That only happened once. In the early days of the UFC, Hoist Gracie won three titles in UFC 1, 2, and 4. He threw in the towel in UFC 3 due to dehydration. When you consider the fact that Hoist's family invented the game, that Hoist trained continually from the time he was a toddler when no one else really understood the game, it's a wonder he didn't dominate for a longer period. His later career was marked by losses and disputes. The UFC was originally created to promote Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but it was really about the Gracie family. BJJ has ridden the wave of Hoist's fame, despite the fact that no pure BJJ stylist has managed to duplicate Hoist's early limited and controversial success. Wing Chun was designed for self-defense. As such, it is a complete art which tends to emphasize striking over grappling based on our observations that in self-defense, intentional ground fighting is a poor tactical choice. It's true that most winners of the UFC have a strong grappling background and tend to focus on grappling more than does traditional Wing Chun, but this should not be a surprise since the game was designed by grapplers and despite the changing rules, it's still a modified jujitsu game which favors grapplers and handicapped strikers. First, let's take the shape of the playing field. UFC fights in an octagonal cage, which favors grapplers and is unlike any environment outside of the UFC. Many seasoned strikers will tell you that cornering your antagonist gives you the highest probability of success. When a fighter is cornered, he can't retreat or escape your blows. But no standing fighter can corner his opponent in the octagon. There are no vertical 90 degree angles, so there is always a lateral avenue of escape. In fact, the only 90 degree angle in the octagon is between the floor and the walls. This gives the grappler the advantage because only a ground fighter can force his opponent into a corner. The second best option is to sandwich your antagonist between your strikes and the wall or the ropes. Again, this is impossible in the octagon because the chain link fence is flexible and absorbs some of the force of your blows. In fact, the only semi-solid surface in the arena is the floor, so if you're going to sandwich your opponent, the floor is the only place to do so. In addition, contestants in the UFC are not allowed to grab the fence. This is partially to avoid injury to the fingers, but it also means you can't use the fence to prevent the grapple from taking you down. Conversely, a solid wall can help you get back to your feet but it's very much more difficult to do this against a flexible fence. UFC gear also favors grapplers. The contestants are required to wear gloves. This is partly to protect the hands, since if not properly conditioned, the bones of the hands are delicate. However, the gloves are also there to protect the recipient of the strike. In an episode of Sports Science, Bosco Rutten compared his striking force wearing a boxing glove, an MMA glove, and his bare hands. The difference between the two types of gloves was not statistically significant, but compared to his bare hands, the gloves reduced nearly 20% of his force. In contrast, there is no protection against a choke, armbar, ankle lock, or any other grappling technique. Next, the UFC mats nullify striking force. Combat sports typically use mats for contestant safety. The thickness and material of the mats play a large role in determining the stability of the ground. Boxing mats can be as thin as three quarters of an inch. MMA mats are at least one inch and can be as much as two inches thick. Striking is a product of momentum and it has to follow the rules of conservation of momentum. That means, as Newton's third law states, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if you hit someone with a certain amount of force, that same force minus that lost in the environment will hit you in the hand. Punching relies on a solid chain from the ground to your fist. If any part of that chain is weak, the opposite force Newton spoke of will move out of that weak link. The momentum of your punch will be reduced along with the force of your punch. Consequently, striking arts rely on a solid connection to the ground. If the ground isn't solid, your punch can't be solid either. Add that to the nullifying effect of the gloves, 
and a significant amount of striking force is lost. My research team hasn't determined whether you add or multiply these nullifying forces, or if it's some complex physics formula, but the effect has to be cumulative. In addition, the distance between the floor joists and an MMA floor is typically greater than it is for a normal floor or even a boxing floor. This results in a more springy floor and hence a less forceful punch. To further illustrate the point, suppose some intrepid Wing Chun clan designed a game in which the fighters competed in a six-foot cube with hard plexiglass walls and corrugated metal floor. Add some gear to protect the throat against chokes, the joints against hyperextension, remove the gloves, and you should begin to get a pretty good comparison as to how the environment and gear can favor a certain style of fighter. You should also be able to see how the octagon is not a proper venue for a test of Wing Chun. Furthermore, though the UFC is still pretty much no holds barred, the same can't be said of strikes. Many strikes are barred. In fact, 56% of the rules are dedicated to restricting the kinds of strikes that can be used in the UFC or protecting grapplers. For instance, the rules protect the grappler by penalizing small joint manipulation. As I said, the bones of the hands are delicate, so too the tendons and ligaments of the hand. It's easy to sprain or break a finger, which makes grabbing a poor tactical choice. But as often happens in games, rules protect poor choices. The problem here for a Wing Chun man is that Wing Chun favors simple solutions. And in the UFC, our typical simple solutions are barred, forcing one to adopt more complex solutions, for instance, those taught in Jiu Jitsu. So if you're going to compete in the UFC, you may as well learn some Jiu Jitsu or a comparable grappling art. To recap, the reason no pure Wing Chun stylist is dominating the MMA today is because the artificial environment and the rules tend to focus contestants into a certain aspect of fighting, one which Wing Chun typically de-emphasizes in favor of a more practical, realistic urban combat training.